Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. God bless you. All the prophecies that you watch on the YouTube channel, the BitChute, the the Brighteon, and the Rumble channel can be found at the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. The information for that is in the description box, but to those who may be listening only, it is www.the-masters-voice.com. I've recently announced that the Master's Voice is going to be expanding to different types of social media. So I will be expanding the reach of these prophetic messages from the Lord Jesus Christ for the end times generation. This means the generation that is alive now to places like TikTok and Instagram. I already have a Facebook page where I've been uploading clips and I've recently started publishing the blog post there as well, because I always strongly recommend that the, the blog is the linchpin to everything that I'm doing. Every message is written down so that as you go and you read the messages, it really does help you to connect with God. The scriptures are there, the teaching is there, the explanations is there. And the reason that I devote so much time to this work is not only because I want to do an excellent work for the Lord and I want to be found faithful, but because I know that God has instructed us, even with the word, his Bible, to study, to show ourselves approved. And so if we are in these end times and we find that we are improperly trained, perhaps the church did not prepare us, or be perhaps because we also have to take responsibility. We were going to church, but we did not vet what we were being told against what the word of God actually says. Whatever the reason is that so much of the body of Christ is ill-prepared now, God has sent this blog, these prophecies, this work, and me to make sure that everyone has a chance. And so the reason that I'm going to places like Instagram and TikTok, where I had previously clearly indicated that you probably would never see me, is because the Lord spoke to me very clearly and he told me that there are further fields and I should expand into all those fields go as far af afield as I can. And so the reason I'm coming to a place like TikTok is not so I can adjust to the culture. I think it's very important that that be understood. I'm not coming into what is primarily a youthful space so that I can start using slang language and perhaps trying to bring these prophecies down to a level as most people do when they are preaching. This is part of the problem that the church is ineffective because the church is so concerned with being modulated to the world. The church is so concerned that we, we blend in and so the world thinks that we're cool and hip and all I can say is this far in, I'm not changing anything for anybody. The prophecies will stay exactly the same. The Holy Spirit will give me the wisdom to know how to package the word that I have, which is teaching, exhortation, and God's prophetic truth in a way that it fits the different platforms. As I learn them and as I, as I get used to them, I know that just as God helped me here, as he helped me on BitChute and Rumble and Brighteon, as he helped me with the Spanish language channel, which is being very excellently translated. It is called La Voz del Señor, and the information for that is also below in the description box. Just as the Holy Spirit has helped me with every single publication, with every single video, I absolutely know that if there are any fruit that are ripe to come into the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit will give me that fruit. Anyone who wants to know more about Jesus, anyone who wants to learn what Jesus considers sin so that you can break up with sin, break up with your habits, break up with your attitude, break up with what the Bible calls transgression. If people are on any app, the master's voice is recently made available on SoundCloud, and I'm going to be looking into other audio platforms as well. God giving me grace. So if there are hearts that are ready, hearts that will listen and receive and do an about turn from the cliff edge and change and follow Jesus Christ, then this blog is going to bring in this same harvest as it did when I started out and I had just a few people and it was smaller 
And now God is growing it and the Lord will continue to expand it because that is his way. He is massive and everything that he does will be done to its greatest extent. I am continuing in this series about homosexuality. The Lord smartly brought me back to this series after I was on totally different topics just a few weeks ago. And today's prophetic message is going to incorporate quite a few pieces. I'm even led in my heart to share just a tiny snippet from my own, um, my own lessons with the Lord. So Obviously, all these dreams that are published are dreams that are prophetic dreams that God wants to be proclaimed into the earth. But there are quite a few dreams that I have that are just for me. They're FYI celestial. And when I wake up from them, I am in total wonderment at some of the things I see in complete awe. And then the Holy Spirit will come and tell me, this means this, and this is that. And so I found one that I feel that I can safely share some of the information from that into today's prophecy. Today's prophecy is talking about homosexuality from an extremely divine and spiritual aspect. Now, if you are in this lifestyle, it is almost a guarantee that you will not want to hear it put like this. But then again, if you are in this lifestyle and you have managed to stay here this long, then I strongly feel that you may have a heart that is open enough to hearing God's perspective on these things. Always remember, whether it's about homosexuality, abortion, how to safely make money in this world, how to rightly raise children in this world, how to rightly look at things that truly control people in this world, like how they perceive male-female relationships, how they perceive uh, government politics, things like that, things where people just tend to throw their toys and not think clearly. The highest perspective is Jesus's perspective. You grasp that perspective. You are miles ahead of the competition to living a life that pleases God. And so God was showing me this dream is from August the 15th, 2021. And when I got this dream, I have to say that I was so taken aback that I simply wrote it down and I shelved it and I've only come back to it today. It has already been published and the link will be below. So God was discussing this thing from a spiritual standpoint and I pray that ears will be open. I pray that the parents of the rainbow children who are so defiant against God, because many of these people, I have to say, they've already been handed over to the reprobate mind they are already so hardened. They're not even committing homosexuality, but they have trans children and they are determined to support their trans children in every single step of the transition, even if it means that they are willing accomplices to the destruction of their children. Just a few days ago, I published the prophecy where God says, I will try them by fire. And something that really touched me in that message was where God says, I am going to test them to see what they love. I don't know how many listeners actually grasped the depth of what God said. When God says he's going to test you to see what, he lo what you love, he means that he's going to allow the test to come to the core of your being. This means the core things that you hold so dear that if someone tried to touch those things, you would be so offended and you would have this basic response, almost like an animal that feels threatened. You would have such a violent response if anyone tried to touch that or tweak it or tell you that it wasn't right. Why? Because those things will touch on core identity. If you are in a trans lifestyle, if you are in a homosexual lifestyle, and then you come across a video that you feel is hateful, it's not. It's the truth. God cannot be hateful. He made you. And when he says things are, it is you that needs to adjust your understanding to him. But if your feelings are telling you that hearing the truth is hateful, then you are bound to have the wrong response and continue walking the path that God says is not going to be fruitful. Parents, if you have gay children and you truly feel that the best posture you can have is to be allies to your gay children, whether they're young or old, your trans children, whether they're young or old, because you're so desperate to keep them, 
that you're willing to sin against God and forfeit the truth in order to be an ally to your child, then you're basically showing God what you love, which is your child over God's truth. And the sad thing about the truth of God is God is not going to come to defend this truth now. So all you will have in this world are voices like mine defending this truth, laying this truth out for everyone to make a very heavy, final, and weighted decision. But God himself is not going to come on the scene. He is the most important of all. And you're only going to get a face-to-face -face with him after you die on judgment day. So if the decisions you make now are locked in, like final jeopardy, and then majestic Jesus walks on the scene, praise his holy name, and he begins to weigh all decisions and try them in the fire. How terrible and how heartbreaking will it be to find out that what you loved was an X, was a no, was the wrong answer. You picked the wrong door, but now your choices are locked in and your eternal resting place is going to be according to what you chose. When God says he's going to try us by fire, please allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to search you. Please allow the fire of the Holy Spirit, the word of correction, the truth of God, and the word of rebuke to lead you away from exalting yourself as your God. You are not a God. If you catch the wrong type of cold, you will end up in a box. These are the basics that keep people humble, that pastors don't tell people, that we are very fragile beings. We are very easily ended. And so we, what we have as a shield is not pride. Pride hardens you like a turtle shell and it makes truth bounce off you because you get offended and you hate to hear it. What we have as a shield is humility, a soft heart that will say, well, Lord, I've been in this thing so long, but when I listen, I feel something. Don't drive that thing that you feel away. Don't squash it. Don't think about the alphabet rainbow community. What will they say if I come out of the life? Come out of the life. They're not your twins. You weren't all born together. Step away from them, separate from them, be brave. Come out from among them and be separate. You have nothing to give in exchange for your soul. You can't buy your soul back if you destroy it. And so this is a very spiritual thing. America, I'm speaking directly to you. Other nations, you are listening as ancillaries that can learn from this. I'm speaking directly to the United States of America. First and foremost, speaking of a time that America is going to see and all nations are going to watch it happen. And this is going to happen in many other nations. This dream was as blunt as possible. And when it gets to the dream, I'm just going to read it out. And it will be very clear to everyone who's listening. This prophecy is called The Rainbow and Men, August 15th, 2021. The banner scripture is very lengthy. And so I will only read the bottom bit. And then with time, I will come back to the whole thing. Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Acts 17, and these are the last few verses, verses 30 and 31. So it's saying that indeed ignorant times will come upon the earth. Men will make choices that are extremely uninformed. Men will be swayed by culture and current trends of the day, and that will result in times of great ignorance. But it says that God overlooked these times, but now God has changed his posture and he is commanding all men, men for the purposes of this entire post is going to be including women and children. God is not feminist. When he says men, he's talking about the race of men, mankind, myself, males, and children. So God is saying that now the time has come where the posture is no longer that he will overlook. The posture is now that 
men everywhere, everybody who hears that Jesus is going to return and he's going to receive some and reject some, whom he receives to his rest in heaven, who he rejects to the lake of fire, which is the second death. God says that it is no longer time to participate in ignorance because he's not overlooking ignorant choices and ignorant lifestyles anymore. Now the command is that everyone must repent. That means everyone must accept that they have sin and they must confess it openly before Jesus Christ. And they must humble themselves and admit that they have no power to stop the operation of sin in their lives by themselves and that they want the Holy Spirit to come in and the Lord Jesus Christ to redeem them, that they will honor him as God and also as Lord, meaning that they will submit their will, their choices, and what they want to what Jesus says is good. And God says that there is a day coming that he will then judge how well everybody did what I just said. And he said that the judging of that will be by the one who is chosen, the ordained one, Jesus Christ. So this dream is on homosexuality and what is at the root of it, the spirits that control and spread this. No one is born gay. This is a lie that America has greatly profited off of. This agenda of homosexuality has funneled millions of dollars into lobbyist groups, into special interest groups, into particular pockets of those who now realize, even the retailers, that there's a pretty penny to be made simply by stringing a few colors together and quickly putting it onto socks and toys and shirts and t-shirts and sunglasses and everything that they can touch. So don't think that these corporations are allies. They're in it for a buck. This agenda is manipulating people and it's taking advantage and it's spreading. But God is saying that we do well not to be fooled by looking at it with the natural eye and thinking, oh, maybe it's because it's profitable or maybe the kids are doing it because it's the current trend. God says that beneath this act rising up in the earth, it's not being mobilized by human will. It's not being spread by people first. It is proliferating because it's sin. And wherever you find sin moving like a fast moving tsunami wave heading for the shore, you are certain to find demons, spirits, and Satan himself. So this movement of homosexuality that has snowballed in the last 10 years into a very aggressive trans movement where it's now not enough to be gay and with another man, you now need to say that you are a full-blown natural born XX female and everyone has to accept what you say, even if there's no visible evidence that what you say makes sense. This is coming from somewhere and it's coming from the spiritual realm. The Lord says that this first general idea, we should allow this. I want to do this. I should try this. It's coming from a higher plane. So the first seeds of the idea that introduces it, the lust, the consuming push to spread it, and then this fierce, this aggressive and almost violent response when you try to comment on it, this pushback that is... It's so, it's, it's like a wolf that is trapped and when you come near it, it's ready to fight you to the death. This is all evidence of spiritual underpinnings of what looks like human beings living their lives and making their choices. He says all of it comes from a place that we don't see because everything on earth has its origin in the spiritual realm. Yah is spirit, and his method of creation is that all things were spoken from him first, out of the spirit. The spirit of God was hovering over that broken and chaotic world. Therefore, the material universe and everything that is in it comes first from spirit, and all power derives in its original form from Yah. Behold, to the Lord your God belongs heaven and the highest heavens, the earth and all that is in it. Deuteronomy 10 and 14. The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, 
the world and those who dwell in it. Psalm 24 and 1. What we see, and by association, what we don't see, comes from the Lord. This means, however, that even the broken, evil, and wicked, and unclean things that show forth power on the earth are also using what derives from God. This means the devil is using borrowed power. Satan has no power of his own. The power that Satan used to manipulate, to steal, kill, and destroy here on earth is the power he fell from, fell with from the higher realms when he was kicked out of heaven with his angels. God, for his own reasons, did not take away the power that the evil kingdom uses. Now the higher unseen entities then give further derivative power to sorcerers, to witches, to those who practice witchcraft. Beyonce doesn't have any evil power of her own. These people that do satanic rituals that sacrifice children, they are making the sacrifices so that the entities that hold power that originally came from God can be given to them. These are human beings. And apart from tapping into the unclean realm of power, they can do nothing. But even if Satan and the rest of them were to be shut off like a tap from God, they would have no power to give those who serve them. And in this way, the Lord is letting us know that the desires of good and evil are constantly in flux because there is constantly a power struggle between the spirit that gives good one spirit, not spirits. There is one spirit who is the Holy spirit that gives forth power and all the power that is in the angels who love and serve God comes from the father. Likewise in the evil kingdom, the power that they use to give their minions is also derived from the power that God gave them and God in his wisdom for whatever reasons did not take it back. So Satan is constantly trying to rule over people and Satan will rule over every person who is not submitted to Jesus Christ. When you hear this dream, please understand that your choices go so far into the future that they are going to hit eternity. No one is threatening you, but without information, it is 100% out of 100% that people will make terrible and destructive choices. The devil's power is stronger than people. Please understand this. It doesn't matter how anointed or gifted or special you think you are, how deep your relationship with daddy God, you go toe to toe with Satan, you're going to lose 10 times out of 10. The power that beings from the heavenly realm have is greater than people. However, the only human being that Satan cannot defeat in a direct contest is a human being who is wholly surrendered and submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Please bear in mind, if you're a Christian, you're in the kingdom of God, but you're messing around with sin, you are not wholly surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You've got issues going on that have you as a small G, smoking that weed, sleeping with men, making porn videos and saying that you need to get that paper. Whatever it is that you're doing, you cannot use the name of Jesus Christ as a band aid. You have to surrender your life and your will to him. And then what happens is his Lordship rises in you like a mighty trumpet, a strong horn in the Bible. When they say he has, he has strengthened my horn. It means that he has actually renewed my strength in him. Satan cannot beat that person. He can fight that person, but he cannot triumph over the one who is wholly surrendered and submitted to the Lordship of King Jesus Christ. But if you are messing around, you have holes and Satan will hook his talons claws and wingtips into those holes and break it apart and come into that house. And this is what we are seeing with homosexuality. People are either opening the door through curiosity and following trends and the enemy is coming in, or people have suffered what the Lord was calling soul wounds. And these soul wounds are most often if a person is not willfully, for instance, looking at porn that opens doors for the spirit to enter in, or this person is experimenting and saying, well, it's the trend to be bi, or it's the trend to be a man and then become a woman and then become a lesbian trans, which means I go back to whatever it is. This soul wounds usually happen 
to people when they are very young through sexual abuse. That is almost the primary way. I've actually, since I've been doing these videos since 2022, when the Lord led me into these heartbreaking things, I've seen people coming here and saying that, you know, when I listened, I was struggling with it at first, but I decided to go to God about it. And when I started praying, then the Lord revealed to me that when I was almost too small to remember, somebody touched me. And it's usually family. It will be family or it will be daycare or it will be the immediate enclave around a baby. The people who are first around a baby that are usually responsible for this form of sexual abuse. And sexual abuse creates not just holes. I would call them almost portals. It tears the fabric of the human soul. God says it, it is, we're not supposed to awaken love before the time, meaning that no one is supposed to be exposed to sexual stuff before there is mental and physical physical maturity to handle it. That's the first level. And then until that person is in marriage, I'm never going to leave out the marriage part. I don't care how mentally and physically ready you are. If you are not married and you are in any form of sexuality, whether it's pornography, masturbation, whether it is fantasy in your mind or voyeurism or whatever it is that you are doing, point blank period, you are in sin. You are outside of God's boundaries and it can get dangerous for you if you do that. And so God was speaking of soul wounds and he was saying that people can get snared in this lifestyle, but it will always happen spiritually first. So those wounds will be created or the lust comes into the mind through the pornography. There's a lot of men who watch female to female pornography and they think that that is okay. And you don't know that Satan is the king of the looky-loo. You'll be looking at those two women, but when the desire pierces you, it will not be for you to desire women. It will be for you to go to your friend male and be with them. And you will be shocked, but you will have a hook in your nose, a hook in your eye through what you were watching, a hook in your mouth. And off that thing will drag you to do what you never thought that you would ever do. And so the Lord says that the people who may be captured into this lifestyle may not even be a willing or a sentient participant. This is speaking of little ones. People are beginning to catch their children experimenting with the same sex at very young ages. And they are shocked to see where is this coming from? These things are entering in from previous abuse. They're entering in through what the children have access to view at very young ages. They're entering in because lasciviousness is a spirit. Lust is a spirit. And there's no cut off age for how old or how young you can be to do that. There are little children. Their parents are traumatized because they've caught toddlers in the process of stimulating themselves. This person got out of the womb last Thursday, but one, where do they have this urge to do this from? People are not asking themselves the right questions in these homes. They're going off to psychologists and experts when the fact is that Satan is squatting like a bullfrog in the house and you don't even need to crack your skull too hard about how he came in. The bigger question is, are you equipped to get him out before your child ends up in the San Fernando Valley crowd? And so here is the dream. I dreamt of the rainbow in the sky I saw it up there, high above in gray clouds that covered the sky, but it was not the rainbow of God. This rainbow was alive and it could talk to people. It influenced people around the whole world and told them to do things and they did it. You couldn't see it. You couldn't see what was talking to you, but that rainbow was alive. And it did speak and people obeyed what it said. I saw the rainbow come down from the sky and live among people. It came down to earth and stayed with us. It told people to do certain things and they did it. Anyone the rainbow spoke to, if they did not have the name of God upon them, if they did not have the mind of God sanctifying their life, and the shield of the Most High protecting their hearts. They did what the rainbow said, 
or they became a friend and supporter of the rainbow. I saw all the colors and the rays of the rainbow descending to earth in the last days with a message. The rainbow had great power and it even told governments what to do and they did it. If anyone did not obey the rainbow's requests or refuse to do what it said, it was wroth with them. That is how it was shown to me. The rainbow was wroth with them. The word wrath means extremely stirred up with great wrath and rage that overflows. The picture of wrath is think of hot lava spilling and splashing out of an active volcano. That is what wrath means. Now, if you think back to what I just said in the beginning about the kind of response we get when you bring this up with a family member that this lifestyle is not okay. I'm sure no one is lost listening to what God showed me. That is how it was shown to me that if you did not obey the rainbow's requests or you refused to do what it said, the rainbow became wroth with you. It became very angry and attempted to destroy whoever would not do what it said. As I was watching the rainbow sitting on a cloud, I saw that it was alive. The rainbow had beings in it of terrible proportions, and it was them speaking to people, speaking to governments and telling them what to do and say and be like, telling them what kinds of laws to make and how humanity ought to be. Those beings in the sky manipulated the rainbow and told people what to do and say until one day I saw the rainbow descending with brilliance down to earth. When it came to earth, the beings came out of it and said they wanted to live with people to help them better understand themselves. Many people were in awe of the rainbow. They accepted it and they agreed to it. But I refused and the rainbow was wroth with me. Great rage was upon me because I had said no, because I refused the rainbow. Some other people refused too, and the rainbow was angry. It persecuted the people, and they had to run away. I dreamt that people, quote, fingers, came down from heaven and slept with mankind. I saw great beings in the sky, but I could not see clearly. God deliberately obscured their nature. That means that God clouded them up or he made them fuzzy and not clear. He obscured their nature, please listen, so that my eyes would not be destroyed. They were up there, but they came down and they slept with human beings and mankind became very corrupt and wicked. Man became hybrids. Man turned into man and animal. Man turned into man and beast. Strange beasts. People who made sexual links with the rainbow became a thing never seen before. Mankind became so very wicked in their hearts and in their doings. The heart of a man changed after sleeping with a being from heaven, he became reprobate and was given a beast's heart, a beast's mind, and a beast's appetites and understanding. It was like King Nebuchadnezzar, but worse. The man or woman who slept with the beings that came from heaven became sick first. Then they became corroded quote fingers. That's the only way to describe it. The part of them that becomes human when we are conceived became corroded. That means it became rusted, worn away, like a penny left out in the rain for a very long time. That is how the human being deteriorated. I saw that any person who had sexual links, sexual relations, or sexual intimacy 
with the beings from the rainbow became sick, evil, corrupted, ruined, and of absolutely no use to God anymore. Many people slept with them and they produced hybrids and the number of the wicked multiplied upon this earth exponentially until the earth cried out under the burden of her sin. This is the word and vision of the Lord seen by me on August 15th, 2021. So as you listen to this dream, those who have been watching the blog for a very long time, these are the people who are most accustomed to hearing me one day speak of a prophecy that deals with things completely here on the earth, political things, things to do with our earthly needs, like God saying that America will have financial crash, financial crisis worse than 2008. And yet these people will hear me seamlessly two days later begin to talk about things like the Nephilim, like the return of King Og of Bashan, who, if you don't know who that is, he was probably a 16-foot giant from the Old Testament. I was thinking about it the other day when I was coming from the market, and I thought to myself, you know, Lord, there were a lot of Nephilim, but Og of Bashan and Goliath they really had it going on because they are mentioned by name in the biblical record. It's not a lot of the giants, the Rephaim, you know, the Zimzumim and those people who got their names mentioned by name. But Og of Bashan made it. And so did Goliath. These are the conversations that I was having with the Lord as I was coming back from the supermarket and thinking, Lord, it is quite an achievement for a Nephilim to be mentioned by name and to have his people also mentioned by name. I think Og of Bashan gets the whole of Deuteronomy 13, if I'm not mistaken. And so this is, this is something that if the, pro, if the pastors had been teaching the Bible properly, they would bring it out to the people of God. How do you read the Bible and you get to a whole chapter on a man who is at least three to four sizes, the size of a human being, and it's only now in the last days because God has cracked open this information and opened these scrolls that people are starting. Now you look on YouTube, every single person is talking about the fallen, whether they understand it or they don't understand it. Everybody's making a video. Why? Because prophet Daniel was told in the time of the end, knowledge would increase. I'm smiling because these things are wonderful. If, if we've lived this long to see these things, are we really just going to take a heart attack posture to everything? Every prophecy, heart attack, every prophecy, stress. At what point are we going to simply flatline, mellow out and say, Lord, let me learn this thing and let me get ready because there's people, I'm sorry to say you're 21 years old, but you've got a 26 year old heart in you. At 26 years old, it will be your time on this earth. And so whether you're 21 now, you're probably listening, you're thinking, yeah, we're going to live and see all this. Maybe not. You may be young, but if your time is at 26 or age 28, then you're old. At the same time, there's a 51-year-old listening to these prophecies. You've got a 90-year-old heart in your chest. You're a pretty young guy. You've got 40 extra years in you, which means that as you listen to this stuff, you might be one of those older people. I hope I don't live to see this. What if you do? Are you working on the fruit of the spirit that strengthens you unto all things? For what? has Yeshua come if he has not come to build you up unto all things. The prophecy is not here to cause melting in the hearts of the Christian. It is to build you up. Onward Christian soldier marching as to war. If we sang more songs like that, instead of the fluff and the dippy bop dip that's on the radio now, I believe that we would be much better prepared to face what God is saying. God is saying something that if Noah was alive, he would be going, yep, yep, I've been through it, and now it's your turn. It's our turn. They're coming back. They manipulate things. The dream clearly says that I saw that the rainbow manipulates both individuals but governments, for individuals, it plants the seed in their heart, like that video I just did that is called Stay 
true to your assigned gender? Why don't you become a woman? Why don't you wear men's boxers instead of the lacy camisoles that belongs to women? Why don't you try out male stuff and cut your head in a buzz cut and take and wear chest binders? And then after a while of chest binding, the reprobate mind is never satisfied. The demons, the rainbow is never satisfied with the little that you do. It always wants some further concessions. And you can see that even in the alphabet community, nothing will satisfy them until everyone is gay. But as we have heard, the rainbow is going to have to get upset with some of us because the answer is a big, fat, loud, no, no concessions, no changing, no saying that a man is a woman and a woman is a man. These things are illogical fallacies. They don't even make sense. If a man is a woman, then he can't be a man, but that is what he is. That is the starting point, man, which completely nixes where he wants to jump and land in the pool with the women, pun intended, Mr. Thomas. And so for the individual, there will be the hook to lure you to cross the line and transition or the hook to lure you to cross the line from your proper sen sexual orientation to go towards your own team. But for governments, the Lord was showing me and saying that the rainbow tells governments what to do, what to say, how to be. This is all the policy we see around us today that is so amorphous. It's not firm anymore. They're using all this slidey language to change the times and laws. In the prophecy, the iron pen, the Lord gave a whole section on LGBTQ. He said that this is the hill America is going to die on, that America is going to emphatically refuse to separate from this lifestyle. And as a result, heaven will absolutely reject her. I said I, th that part of the, of the prophecy of the vision, it started with seeing the White House bathed in rainbow colors at night, the whole thing lit up. The government is going to push this thing until the wheels fall off. And so if people think that they can fight it with protests in the mouth, we're dealing with something otherworldly here. And those beings, after they corrupt from the higher level, sending spiritual impulse into the human being, when the earth is ripe enough, to sleep with them, they are going to reveal themselves and we will be back in the days of Noah. I have said it and I have said it and I have said it. If you own a Bible and you think that the Bible has been rightly interpreted by the teachers of today, I venture that you have been deceived by the teachers of today. Open your Bible and read your Bible for yourself Get rid of the filters they gave you because the filters are dirty and caked with mud and that is why you can't see and that is why you are offended by hearing every word that I speak. The words that I speak are like arrows and they fight the false beliefs that many people have until they're choking and they can't handle it. But if you will let go of that tiny little raft that you're clinging to, God will translate you onto the good ship last day's ark where you'll have all the room to be with the people who know the truth. God says that Og of Bashan will be raised back to life using technology and other processes that these fallen ones are bringing. And what the Lord said astounded me. I handled it last year. There's a whole prophecy on the master's voice that is simply titled Og of Bashan and the fallen angels. The Lord says that when Og is raised back to life, his memory is going to be so intact that he's going to come back to life at the very moment of rage. Og of Bashan was killed, praise God, by Joshua and the Israelites. And so when somebody kills you, you die with all that muscle memory intact. You die with rage. You die with pain. You die with anger. You die knowing that you're dying and angry that another person has beaten you. When Og of Bashan is brought back to life, Og of Bashan will come back to life filled with all the knowledge of who killed him and who killed all his people. 
And God said that that man's memory will be as crisp. I use man very loosely. Og of Bashan is a massive and hairy Nephilim giant person. He will be raised back by this technology. If you think it's strange, ask yourself why those people in CERN in, in Switzerland are building huge circles that they say are smashing particles to play with dark matter. Do you think that these people are investing billions of dollars because they're bored? Elon Musk has become so rich that he suddenly wants to invent Neuralink or Skylink or whatever kind of link to attach it to your brain. The man has been saying openly in public, we're all cyborgs. He's been saying it for a year. It's just like the people who say, we're all a little gay. All of this is programming. At what points is the church finally going to throw off the blankets, get out of the pajamas, have a shower and be mature? Do you really think that these things are happening because Jesus is coming to rapture you out of the reality of the beast system of Revelation 13? Or is it finally time to come to the adult table, pull out a seat and say, hi, I'm finally here, celestial and friends. What have I missed so far? 360 prophecies here on YouTube, I think. It's about 350, but on the other sites where the medical playlist can be found, I'm almost at 400 videos and at at least 500 written prophecies. And so there's quite a bit to catch up on, and that is your responsibility. And may the Holy Spirit guide and lead you. The rainbow is behind the end times homosexual and transgender agenda, and it is going to insist on having its way, it is going to insist. I saw people mating with strange flesh. That means that you have gone right past men, you've gone right past women, you've skipped over child and beast that I just covered, and you have gone into the most forbidden of territories. The, ter the territory that, when ancient people crossed into it, the Lord drew the line, he put the bath tap on, and everybody drank water until there was no more life, until Noah and seven other people was all that remained of original mankind. God drew the line at humanity laying with strange flesh, immortal flesh that carries a different form of glory. He drew the line at that. That was the end of that civilization. And now we are hearing that they will come and want to live with us and tell us that they want to help us better understand ourselves and people will be in awe of seeing these angels. Let me find the information that the Lord shared. This information is from prophetic truth that has no title. When I'm writing down the things that the Lord is sharing with me, I don't always give it a title because it is just for me. The Lord said, angels are a locked class. Nobody makes them but me. They cannot be replicated and they cannot be remade. Angels can appear as man, but they are different from mankind. So when the Lord is talking about angels being a locked class, you now understand that all of Satan's shenanigans that you can see in the book of Enoch, that you can see in the book of Jasher, the creatures like centaurs and other things that Satan made, there is a limit to this power of Satan that I was speaking about in the beginning. Satan cannot make another angel. Satan cannot even replicate himself. And that is because angels are a locked class. Nobody makes them but God. Satan cannot make a single one of his other angel brothers whether Michael and them that stayed in heaven as loyal servants of the Lord, or whether the ones who fell with him, he cannot replicate or remake them. And the Lord says that angels can appear as men. And we find this in the case of the angel that came to Samson's mother and told her she would have a child. She told her husband, a man prophesied to me that I would have a child. And for that account of how Samson came into the world, you see these two people discussing, when can we see the man? And then the man has come back, but it was an angel. Gideon also saw an angel and did not know that he was facing an angel because he had the appearance of a young man who was simply encouraging Gideon. And so an angel can come to earth to deliver Yah's message and take the form of a man. He can present as a man. This literally means that he can appear as human. 
But he is an angel through and through using man's flesh as an object of camouflage. Now, why would an angel come to earth and use this flesh as an object of camouflage? The Lord says to conceal his glory as a messenger of heaven. This is how God ordained it for the safety of his people. So if you're God's people, you're not exactly going to be itching to see beings coming down from the sky, all a glow and all a light and all a bright. Because we know that the Bible says that even Satan appeareth as an angel of light. But what of those out there on the Gaia channel and ancient aliens who constantly fasten their eyes on the sky and they, they write all over social media how they hope to see the Pleiadians and the Anunnaki. What of the mass of humanity that is fascinated by all things bright and beautiful? Do you think that fallen angels who will come blazing with light and glory might easily be able to draw such people in? and then present such radiant glory to them that both man and woman would say, I wish to lay with you. It's going to be like that because there is no wisdom in the world anymore. Wisdom is as hard to find as teeth in the mouth of a chicken. So the Lord ordained for his angels to come, sometimes bringing his message, camouflaging themselves in man's flesh, to conceal their glory as messengers of heaven. And God made it so for the safety of his people. Listen to this. A true angel in his blazing form is capable of killing a human being on sight. If male angels blaze forth their glory, which is but a tiny fraction of my ethereal presence, this is God talking. If male angels blaze forth their glory, which is but a tiny fraction of my ethereal presence, for all angels and indeed all creatures de derive their glory from me alone, the angel will cause the heart of the human being to burst and his message will be no use to the human being on sight. So let's look at Daniel. Daniel is fasting. Daniel is facing a great trial and needs to hear from the Lord on behalf of a vision that he has saw and seen, and he doesn't understand it. And he's fasting and he wants to hear from God. And then the angel comes. And then it says that Daniel took a casual seat and he looked at the angel and he said, yes, I've been waiting for you. That is not what happened, is it? No, the angel appeared and Daniel even wrote, I, Daniel, fell in a dead faint. I fell at his feet, but he touched me and strength entered me. And I was thinking of this portion as I was preparing to bring this message to God's people. And I was thinking, why is it in America that people will listen to these false prophets who are like, and then the angel of the Lord appeared to me, seven of them in one night. And this man is confidently telling you that seven angels appeared to him and spoke with him. And he stood on his two feet like a man and spoke to them. No mention of the fact that he fell, hit his face, broke his nose, and the angel had to rouse him back. The angels that came to announce the birth of Jesus didn't even come close to the earth. They made sure to occupy the higher heavenly realms. Why? So that there would be a vast distance between them and the shepherds who were watching their flock by night. The angel that came to tell Mary that she would become the mother of our Savior was not revealing his full glorious form. Mary wouldn't have been able to get a word out if Gabriel had come, male angel blazing forth glory, capable of killing a human being on sight, on sight. And I just read the dream and I said that I looked and I saw beings in the place, but God blurred them out to protect my sight, not my prophetic sight, the actual working eyes that I have to make sure that they would not spoil if I had gazed upon them directly. The Lord says that the angels only carry a tiny portion of his true glory and that they derive their glory from him alone, that all creatures do. 
The giraffe is glorious in its own way, and it is carrying a portion of Yah's glory. The majestic king of the jungle, the dolphin, the sharks, the whales, the eagle, all carrying a derived form of glory from, its, from their maker. But and an, if an angel comes in front of a person unveiled without muting their nature, the human heart, God says, will burst and whatever message that angel was bringing to people would become useless the minute the person fixed their eyes on that angel. A man can die from exposure to angels. And this is how you know that my true servants who experience angels will usually see them in a dream form or a vision. If it is a real life interaction, angels of God are muted, meaning they greatly dim their glory, or they will cause severe damage to the human mind, body, and especially the heart. Now here we come to the crux of it. Fallen angels are the total opposite. They will show off everything that they are and that they have. They will reveal it all. They will blaze forth with glory and light and illumination and brightness and peace and hope and more glory. These angels have beauty, impossible attractive beauty, warmth and glow. The Lord says that the fallen angels even give off and create a feeling of hope and light and aura that greatly, greatly creates a feeling of love in human beings. And here his words, their being, meaning their nature, their core, their hearts, is cold within them. So imagine something coming before you more beautiful than anything you've ever seen, shining and blazing forth with light. And as you stand in the warmth of that light, that illumination, that glow, that presence, that glory inside is an icicle waiting to pierce you at the right moment when you become deceived by what you feel. Feeling Christians out there, how you risk your soul. I don't feel that this was very loving. I don't feel that this was very kind. Third grade maturity. As if the Bible told us, feel your way through Christianity. That's how to do it. it says we live by faith, not by sight. Sight is one of the five human senses. Those are our sensory mechanisms. We don't live by how it looks and we don't live by the news we hear. We don't live by these emotions that are all happy at two o'clock and then we are plunged into depression after we get a call at 2.05. The emotions are unstable. You're a Christian, you're carnal, your emotions rule you. You are bottom tier. You need to work on that because stability and maturity, you can't find those things in the store. You have to fast and pray and grow your way into that kind of stuff. Stability, steadfastness, endurance, perseverance. Those things don't come cheap. They're not a talking game. You work for them. And those who have those things, they can perceive it in other people. Spirit recognizes spirit. Notice that when you go to boxing, Mike Tyson didn't just used to fight anybody. He used to fight people in his weight class and above. It is the skills you have that will announce you in the spiritual realm. It is the skills you have this is why the seven sons of Sceva were beaten to a pulp and sent running naked. Because when they went to try and punch above their weight class, the demon was like, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And he beat them. One person beat seven of them and stripped them. Why? Because they went to try and be above their station. Christians talk a good game, but let Og come on the scene. And then the inner metal will be revealed. But let's go back to the fallen angels. They have beauty, impossible attractive beauty, warmth and glow. So these things will come and tell people everything that they want to hear. This is what is coming out of the rainbow. And so you now know whether you like it or not. Remember, it's 2023. Life is as modern as it gets. And yet God is giving us an ancient key to an ancient door because homosexuality is an ancient sin. It just seems new because we have cell phones and social media and so it gets out a lot more and it seems fresh. 
but Sodom and Gomorrah was burned to ash, tar, and lime over this sin. It was coming from somewhere then, and it's coming from somewhere now. The same place, a spiritual origin. The Lord says that fallen angels give off a feeling of hope into the heart of people, of love, of light, and he said of aura, bright shining lights, and they create light spears of multiple colors. They will literally create personal space rainbows around them. Just as a person jumps out of the water, and when there's droplets of water and the sunlight hits it, you see multiple prisms of colors on the skin. This is how they will do. The Lord said that the fallen ones can form the aurora borealis in persona. So people will come to this blog and call me many things. And yet these things are my pearls. This is my private stuff. This is not personal public prophecy. This is my private learning at the feet of Jesus because we are friends and because he can give me and I will sit and bring these things out of my personal treasures. And then there's bound to be some aberrations that will come and say, what's all this? And who's all this? God will bless me for this in the end. This I know. He said that they can make the aurora in persona meaning that around their own personal selves, the fallen can blaze forth all the colors of the rainbow that was originally meant to glorify me, God speaking, and my abilities in creating them. So now we know why the Bible says that Satan's skin and body is crusted with precious stones. Imagine an amethyst next to an emerald, next to a sapphire, next to the yellow and the pink and the glorious other different colors of diamonds and stones and the rubies, and then the sunlight playing off of that. Would that not create a rainbow effect? They can create the aurora around themselves. They can form the aurora borealis around themselves, whether by one or by many. They can change the color of the sky at night to reflect the northern lights and make men marvel and be in awe. So Americans are getting around outside. People all around the world. I told you all of this back in 2019 about the aurora borealis being seen out of its place. And God says, none of that is my work. None of that is my presence. That is the work of the fallen ones to entice man and to make man fall into their trap of lies and deceptions. And now you understand why the aurora's popping up in every haystack in the United States. Because the Lord says that they have the ability to simply gather in the sky, in concert, and begin to glow up a bunch of them. And then it will look like the northern lights up there, except that it's not. I will read this other little piece, and that is it. Man is like a child before these beings. He is like an infant who knows nothing of the world around him, yet he has been placed in a dimension and a frequency of great darkness and great deception by his own sin, pride, and quintessential wickedness. Listen to God burn us like that. When it says that something is quintessentially whatever, it means that that it's its basic function. Imagine being a human being, walking around with an elevated sense of pride. You're so good, you're so this, you're so that. And then God says, humanity is quintessentially wicked. Meaning that if he turns his back for a split, 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 split second, we would all blacken and cross over and look exactly like the devil. The only thing that retains brightness on mankind is when mankind's face is reflecting Jesus Christ 
But then people want to reflect weed, they want to reflect porn, they want to reflect masturbation, they want to reflect gossip and racism and jealousy and pride and money and every other thing that doesn't look like Jesus Christ. And then they still want to say, I too am beautiful. And yet God is saying, no, you are all quintessentially wicked. There's not one who does good, not one. He says, mankind cannot keep safe because he does not listen. And so mankind cannot be kept, meaning that Jesus cannot put his arm around us and shield us in like chickens because he despises the truth of my teaching. Mankind does not wish to be educated in true things, only false. He does not know me and he does not wish to keep my law. My law has boundaries, dear one, that's me. My law has limits. And when you go beyond that limit, the things that drag men to hell are waiting for all who despise the law of God and will carry them to eternal death and perdition. My law literally is the outer wall. My law literally is the outer boundary, the outer limits of human habitation. And so you heard it here first on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. That thing that I'm always talking about, the thing, the thing that I said keeps us safe. I'm so filled with joy. The thing that I said protects us. There's this thing I said. It's the presence of God and God is his word. And that is why you understand now why the devil must break the laws, why he must change the times and the laws, because they are outside that rim and they cannot come in until we break the word, until we break the outer limits, the boundary, the rim, the safety, until we say trans is okay, gay is okay, touching the eight-year-old and then the eight-month-old is okay and sleeping with the dogs is okay and then putting it online until we break all that. When all of that is broken, the final part of the dream that says, I saw the rainbow came down and beings came out of it. When they have broken all the protection and we are naked as newborns who hate the law, who are like infants between them, who are full of darkness and quintessential wickedness, yes, then they will come and they will tell us, thank goodness that we got rid of those boring caveats that you've been following so long. Let us help you understand real true and just like that, we are back in the Garden of Eden. We are back in the Garden of Eden, looking at the fruit that will make us like God and won't so many people. Fools then, fools now. Bite that fruit and take us into the fiery destruction that Peter talked about, that the whole earth and everything in it is reserved for fire. There is more here, but that is mine. I'm Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you, and thank you for being here. Today's prophecy has been published on the Master's Voice blog, and it is called The Rainbow and Men. God is speaking to all who will listen that if you're going to be carried away by the modern conversations of the day, you're going to totally miss what is behind what is happening. Parents, if you have children in this thing, you're not bringing them out by trying to reason with them. You cannot fight against the glowing warmth that the alphabet rainbow community is getting from the spirits who are telling them they're jealous of you, trans man. When Celestial speaks against you and she speaks against your lifestyle, not even against you, but against the lifestyle, because Celestial is jealous because you are a natural woman and she's a poor copy. That's what these things are telling them. You can't have conversations against spirits. You must ascend into the same high realm where they are and do warfare and battle with the blood of Jesus, with prayer, with fasting. This kind goeth not out. Now that you're hearing, do you really think I'm going to talk to Janice and I just hope she listens to me? You think that's going to work against the rainbow? 
title of the prophecy is The Rainbow and Men. Very old. August 2021. That will make it almost two years and a few months time. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. I pray that the hearts have been edified. I pray that you have learned something. I pray that you will understand that all that glitters is not gold. I pray that you will learn that testing the spirits doesn't mean sending me emails and asking, how do I test the spirits and how do I know that you're telling the truth? Well, you don't know and that's the problem. If you don't know how to test the spirits, that means that your discernment is either lacking or totally non-existent. If you were to meet a fallen angel masquerading as a human being, Let's say it takes the form of your mother. Are you going to stand in front of the fallen one and say, how do I know if you're my mother or not? That just proves that you don't have the spiritual mechanism in place already to discern. You cannot ask a false thing. Are you false? The false thing will tell you, of course, I'm not false. I'm your mother. Discernment actually comes from relationship with the Holy Spirit. It is he who places the check in you to know all is not well with this thing. You pray, and then God will tell you, this is of me, and this is not of me. That's how you discern. You can't ask. You have to go and pray. And most people are so lazy that they don't want to do the work. They just want to leave a casual comment and think that the casual comment is going to provoke me into saying, but I'm not. I don't care. I'm sitting here with treasures. I haven't looked at that prophecy in forever. And I'm looking at it. That's the reason I'm smiling. I am amazed at the stuff I have written down from the Lord. So thank you to those who support the channel. Share the videos with someone. TikTok, I am on the way. Instagram, likewise. And may the Lord expand into all the fields. I will go wherever God tells me to go because there is truth in my mouth and whoever wants to receive it People have already given their testimonies. You will change. There's no way you can come here and say, oh, the prophecies are doom and gloom. There is so much teaching edification and just get up and go for Christians here. Once you get off the fear filter and the attitude filter, there is so much to benefit from. So God bless you. Thank you to all who have been a blessing to me. Just a tiny word to those who are still at using Cash App. Your gifts are not going to be received. So please stop using Cash App. Please read the description at the bottom. Then you won't have to send me emails. Uh, If you still need to send an email because you want to be a blessing, you're welcome to do so. Please just give me a little time. I will get to the emails eventually. God bless you and keep you. And until I see you again, goodbye.